History Spotlight, brought to you by HEC Media and the Missouri Historical Society. Hello, I'm Dr. Jody Sowell, President of the Missouri Historical Society in St. Louis, and this is History Spotlight. Considered one of the 20 greatest baseball players of all time, Satchel Paige has a long history with St. Louis, even though he didn't sign with the St. Louis Browns until he was 45 years old. Public historian Adam Cloppy explains. St. Louis is the home of many baseball legends, players like Stan Musial, Dizzy Dean, and Bob Gibson. But there's one legendary pitcher who had a long and storied history with the city of St. Louis, even though he never played for the Cardinals. In fact, he didn't even play in Sportsman's Park until he had already been a pro for almost 15 years. He's a Hall of Famer and considered one of the 20 greatest baseball players of all time. He is Leroy Satchel Page. The first time St. Louisans got a look at Page, they could have been forgiven for thinking he wasn't that special. The year was 1927, and Page was pitching in one of his first games for the Birmingham Black Barons of the Negro National League, who were in St. Louis visiting the fabled St. Louis Stars. In the game Page started, he didn't even make it out of the first inning. He hit the first three batters he faced. The third batter, Stars catcher Mitchell Murray was so sure that Page was targeting him that he chased Page around the field with his bat, starting a massive brawl between the clubs. Though Page's career got off to a rocky start in St. Louis, he soon became one of the most recognizable names in Negro Leagues baseball. By 1941, Page was such a star that two promoters organized a July 4th game at Sportsman's Park to be played between Page's Kansas City Monarchs and the Chicago American Giants, another Negro Leagues team. But Page was the star. He featured in nearly every advertisement for the game that ran in the city's newspapers. It was to be the first Negro Leagues game played at Sportsman's Park since the early 1920s. Not only that, but for the Monarchs and Giants game, Sportsman's Park relaxed its segregated seating policy. At the time, Sportsman's Park was the only segregated ballpark in the major leagues. But for this game, black fans could buy tickets for seats that they had previously been barred from. The game was a massive success. Over 19,000 fans came out that day to watch Page and the Monarchs dominate the Giants 11-2. The success of the game led to more Negro Leagues games being scheduled at Sportsman's Park and to the eventual segregation of Sportsman's Park itself in 1944. But Page's ties to St. Louis don't stop there. In 1951, only four years after Jackie Robinson broke Major League Baseball's color line, the 45-year-old Satchel Page signed with the St. Louis Browns. Over the next three seasons, Page would pitch over 300 innings for the Browns, and he was so good that he became the first black pitcher selected to the American League All-Star Game in 1952. He left the Browns after the 1953 season, but returned to the major leagues for one game with the Kansas City Athletics. In that game, he pitched three innings and even struck out a batter. Not bad for a guy who was about to turn 60 years old. Next on History Spotlight, a scientist, teacher, and inventor, despite color barriers. To learn more about the Missouri Historical Society, visit mohistory.org.